Hi everyone. In this lesson, at the beginning of chapter 9 of Cynthia Schelmerdine's text, we're going to be working with third declension nouns again, uh, but whereas in chapter 8 we were working with uh, stems that ended in either kappa or ta, we're going to be working with some that end in ta, delta, or theta, these being now dentals. So you might say, well, what's the difference between this ta and this ta. Well, this ta we're going to be dealing with mainly masculine and feminine types. That this ta that we had had earlier was with something with soma, where the nominative was soma, but then we knew that the stem from the genitive singular was somat. So that's that was a gen uh, a neuter that we were working with in the former category, but then the capo could go with either masculine or feminine. These ta data theta dentals that we're working with are masculine and feminine primarily. That's what's going to be the difference. But let's erase all this and go back to what we know about all third declension noun stems. Let's try to get to the big picture, uh, which are the various endings that they can have either for the masculine, feminine, or the neuter. So let's draw a little chart, do our singular plural. We're all used to this now. NG-DAV, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, vocative, and then a little dotted line for uh, moving in between the singular and the plural, and then again, NGDA. I'm going to leave out the vocative here at the bottom because we know that the nominative is always equal to the vocative and the plural. So then for our masculine or feminine types, we're going to be getting this pattern of ending, either a sigma at the end or nothing at all, non-applicable, um, omicron sigma in the genitive singular, a short iota in the dative singular, and leave out that short sign. A short alpha for the accusative, so know it's short, but we don't need to put it in. And then either a sigma or, again, none for the vocative singular. So again, in, in these situations, we actually have this equivalence here and we have the same equivalence here. That's useful. All right, well, let's get back to the plural now of masculine feminine third declension nouns. They're gonna end in epsilon sigma in the nominative, Omega nu, the standard genitive plural ending. Sin, and that's a short nu, uh, iota again. Sin, and then this nu is a nu movable, ultimately. And then the accusative is going to be a short alpha sigma. And we can, we know to distinguish that from the other alpha sigmas in the first declension that we encountered. First declension had that long alpha sigma. So a short alpha sigma, sure sign, the third declension, not uh, first. Good. Let's go into the neuter now. And then the neuter nominative has nothing. That's exactly what we had with that somat, but then Greek doesn't like ending words with a ta, so it just got lost. And then we had that circumflex that explains soma in the nominative. But then the genitive ending singular is going to be very similar again, iota. And then remember that for all neuter nouns, the nominative is equal to the accusative is equal to the vocative. These are all equivalent, so this nothing is this going to be the same nothing here and um, in the accusative and then also in the vocative. Plural, we're going to have a short alpha that we're used to from the uh, second declension neuter. Omega nu, again, the kind of standard, and then sigma iota nu, again, nu movable, just like the nominative, and then our uh, vocative and accusative plurals, again, following the same rule as always, where in, in the neuter gender, always nominative equals accusative equals vocative. Nice and easy. So that's what we have as our chart. Let's now start to apply that to some of these stems, uh, masculine and feminine stems that end in tau, delta, and theta, the, the so-called dentals. So we'll start by drawing a new chart. This one can, has to be fairly big, so I'll get started over here. We're going to have uh, three different kind of body columns, and then a kind of regular tell us what it's all about column on the far left. Draw the uh, dividing line between singular and plural. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, vocative. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. And remember that the vocative is going to equal the nominative always saves us some real estate when it comes to it. So then our first word is going to be the Greek word for torch, uh, something that, not a verb, but a noun, something that burns, right? And this is a feminine noun. Hey is going to be the, uh, the article. And then the noun is lampas. 
accent on the alpha. So the sigma at the end is the sigma that we have from right up here, so that's nothing new. So then our genitive, well, we can do the article, that's going to be taste, and then our the genitive singular, again, will tell us our stem. So it's lampadas. Again, note that the accent is persistent over the syllable right after the MP, the um, mu pi. Uh, but then we see right here that this is telling us what class this is. This is going to be one of those delta uh, third declension nouns. Good. So that's useful. Uh, now we can kind of go through and then add on our regular endings, iota, alpha, and then again our sigma. So te, it's a little awkward, but gets the job done. So we're going to have lampa, and then we're going to add that short iota, so lampadi, short right there. So te lampadi, good, and then accusative, tain, and then lampa, da, short alpha, right there. Great. And then our vocative, again, that's not a, exactly an article, but we, we've grown used to using it as a convention, is going to be this D plus sigma. Well, this, we remember, and if we go back to, I guess it's chapter 8.1, we get a sense of what happens when we pair the dentals with a sigma. The sigma takes over and we end up with the sigma. This is kind of the calculus of Greek. Uh, d uh, d uh, dental plus sibilant, this S, equals sibilant in the end. Uh, the, the sigma wins out. So if we go back here, it's not lampads, but it's going to be, again, identical to our nominative lampas. Good. Now let's do our plural. So article is going to be a high, and then we'll have our stem, lampad, and now we have to add, add our regular ending, epsilon uh, sigma. Lampades, good. Tone. Lampadon. Of the torches. And the dative, let's scoot down so we can see the accusative too. And the dative, I have tice. Lampad. And then again, if we have that stem, lampad plus sin, or just C, short iota, remember, we're same exact calculus, delta plus sigma equals sigma. So we can go in, I'm going to have to do a careful erase job here. I'm, I'm going to just erase more because I need to fit a lot in that first column. Uh, so lam pa, oops, not a delta, lam pa c slash sin. Again, accent persistent over that alpha. Then finally, for this accusative plural, tas long alpha here, and then lam pa das short alpha here, but the accent stays persistent. Good. And then the vocative is going to be equal to the nominative and the plural. So we can see that nothing is really going on new here. We just have different ways that delta is interacting with sigma. Whenever delta gets put next to a sigma ending, that's when we're getting these sigmas coming through and losing the delta, including the nominative. So Again, we always, always with the third declension, well, with any noun, but especially with the third declension, look to the genitive singular, that's going to tell us our stem. Good. So let's, let's get a new color for our next word. The word is going to be grace, and that's going to be he charis, an important word for uh, Christian uh, ancient Greek, uh, but it's also used in... Uh, pre-Christian, pre uh, B.C. Greek as well. So, charis, grace, and we're going to learn that it can also mean kind of gratefulness, thanks, uh, but, but we'll get there when we get there. First off, we don't need to know what it means, we just need to know how to work with it. So, again, we're going to look to the genitive singular to figure out what it's all about, just like the hokey pokey. That's caritas. Okay, so our Omicron Sigma ending. So, again, we have this Sigma, Omicron Sigma. These are our generic third declension, masculine, feminine endings. We'll have a iota, I should have written these out earlier, uh, short alpha, and then the same. And I'm running sigma, but it could also be nothing at all for the nominative. But here we do have a sigma because we can see now, if we were looking at our stem, it's karit. It's one of these ta, sorry, that looks more like a T than a ta, these ta 
third declension, masculine, feminine nouns. So tau plus sigma, as we learned, we know that delta, let me write that up here, delta plus sigma equals sigma, as well as tau plus sigma equals sigma. So that's exact. that explains what's going on with Karas. Our stem is Karat. This was originally, let's get back to that blue, Karitz, but Greek didn't like that, so it got rid of the T, and it became Karis. Good. Date of singular, te. Well, what's this going to be? Karit plus a T. Good. Karit T. Excellent. That's all it needs. Nothing fancy here. Just applying the rules and then tain. Karit, and this gets a little bit fancy because you'd think it would go karita. This is wrong, and I'll tell you why. It's right in some dialects, but in in Attic Greek, which we're learning, uh, but also in Homer, or at least in some Attic poetry. Oh well, well, let me pause. What I'm what I want to say is that in Attic and Homer, and um, also sometimes Ionian Greek, that's the, the Greek of Herodotus, which is closely related to Attic, we will get this karita. Uh, that's exactly, this is the Attic Homeric Ionian form, but more broadly what we'll see, and this is kind of a special rule, so I'm going to write it in over here, uh, for third declension nouns ending, get back to that color, in IS or upsilon sigma, so Yoda sigma, upsilon sigma, will often get genet or uh, dative singular ending in in or un. That's that's just a kind of special occasion. So maybe I can kind of write that in here as a alternate. So sometimes we'll get a nu rather than an alpha. But what we have there, karita worked for Attic poetry and Homeric poetry and also some um, Ionic forms. But let's not worry about that right now. Let's get back and just know that this one is going to be a weird one, a weirdo, Karen. So let me let me get that bright purple underline it so we know that that's something to pay attention to. Good. And then finally, O, and then this is going to be just like the nominative, Karis. Good. So in plural, hi. Again, we'll, we'll write out our stem, Karit. And then we just add that epsilon sigma. Good. Hi, Karites. The graces. You might, you might, well, you'll come across these at some point. Uh, these are goddesses, you know, they're somewhat like the muses, uh, do various things, but the haikarites, that's a, that's a term that comes up. So we have the kind of abstract noun grace in the singular, but in the plural graces, well, it could mean your good graces, but it could also be personified kind of karites with a capital chi. But let's keep on going. Tone, karitone. So nothing fancy going on here, but this is a long omega, so it moves our persistent accent over onto the iota. Tice. And then what's this going to be? Well, it's going to be karat plus sin, or just c. And we remember that that, that tau plus sigma, if we go up here, equals sigma. So we can go back and know that we're just functionally going to lose that tau and have karat sin. And then finally, Accused of plural, long alpha there, remember? And then it's going to be caritas, and that's a short alpha, which we can tell because the accent stays on that initial alpha. Caritas, tas, caritas. Um, the graces as a direct object. Good. One more, let's see. Gray into blue, let's do some kind of light yellow. And this last word is going to be child. And this is actually going to go either way in terms of gender. Well, why? Well, also, we already had a word for child somewhat, didn't we? We had technon, which was neuter. Um, here we're getting a masculine-feminine form, child, that can go either way for the article. So I'm not going to bother with doing all that. We'll just kind of take it as read. Uh, but we'll, we'll focus in on the form, which is pice. In the singular, in the nominative, let's look at the genitive to get our stem. Piedos. Okay. And note that the accent here is actually on the last syllable. Nothing possible, nothing you could do here when it was monosyllabic pice. So again, we, it's really important for us that we, we look at the genitive singular because we're not getting not only the stem pied with a delta, but then also this omicron at the end. 
Good. So let's continue on. So pius pidos, dative singular is going to be easy, pi d. Cusative is going to go back to our usual, not any of that i s, upsilon s thing, just, just simply pida with a circumflex there. It's actually moved back. And then o pi. Here we have the vocative does actually look different from the nominative in price. So this is close, but it's actually slightly different. And the reason for that is that pice is a plural, or not, sorry, not plural. <laughs> it's a monosyllabic, it's a single syllable word. And when we have this, um, a lot of these nominatives like to accent the second syllable of their genitive and dative pi dos and pi d, but then go back to the initial syllable of the kind of here, um, penult. Uh, for the rest of the cases. So that's what's going on here and that we'll see that in the plural too to a certain extent So but we can form these a little bit more easily if we don't worry about the accent. So again, pidus And then pidon So here that's actually a, a violation of the rule normally nouns like monosyllabic nouns like to put that accent on the second syllable in gen and dative in both singular and plural, and we'll see that if we go on to do what would be sin or pidsi, but then again, we know what happens with delta and sigma, so it's really just simply pisi with a new movable, but that accent retains or, or does what it's supposed to on a monosyllabic. It goes to the second syllable. This is a kind of weird, I'll, I'll underline this as a kind of weird exception to the rule. So. The good news for all of this <laughs> is that these, the ones that I'm underlining are weird and you, you need to know them. Uh, at the same time, they're not going to be repeated throughout all of these examples. So uh, put them away as special occasions, um, but, but don't really worry about them too much. So hoi or hai paides, tone paidon, I guess we can write that out. Um, and then this would be either tois or tais, paisi. And then finally, in the accused of plural, Tus or tas paidas. Good. So that was quite a bit that we just put up there. Uh, but let's let's do a quick review. So we're dealing again with the third declension nouns, which will follow this format, and we're looking in this section for the, the dentals, ta, delta, and theta. Uh, we already had a, a ta when we were talking about soma, but that was a neuter form. So really, I guess I might want to add third declension masculine feminine nouns for this unit, just for 9.1. So we're going to be focusing on this column here, masculine and feminine, sigma, omicron sigma, iota, alpha, both of which are short, sigma again, or nothing at all, epsilon sigma, omega nu, sigma iota nu, and then alpha sigma, short alpha sigma. And then we had to know basically just that Dentals plus the sibilant plus s equal sigma in the end. Uh, so I could write that out here too. And then we were just applying these endings that we already knew to these stems that we could always find from the genitive singular. And then when the sigmas kind of raise their ugly head, um, we knew what to do. We would add, you know, we'd do this kind of Greek math and we'd come up with our answers. Two major exceptions there are karen right here and then Pidon, the exception is really simply one of accent, knowing that monosyllabics prefer in the genitive and dative, both singular and plural, to put their accent on the ultima. Here, this just is an exception to the rule. Uh, we won't run into too many more of those. All right, see you in the next lesson. Take care.